Miracles come while we in the fight. Don't give up and hold him tight. You will have a visible battle scar, but never forget who you are and fight, fight, fight. Hello, and welcome to Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. Embracing the Fight was created to help normalize the conversation surrounding physical and mental health issues and concerns. During this podcast, and in order to start the conversation, I'm taking you with me through my journey with thyroid cancer. And if you've been listening to the first three episodes, you'll understand that I won't see the doctor again until February the 8th. So in the meantime, let's talk about you. So when is the last time that you actually went to see a doctor? Better yet, do you have a primary physician, an internal medicine doctor? For the ladies, do you have an OBGYN? And fellas, do you have a urologist? Have you had a breast cancer screening? What about a colonoscopy? All these different things, all these different tests are preventive measures. So what you don't want to do is wait until you start having symptoms. Because sometimes when you have symptoms for certain things, then treatment is either required immediately or sometimes they'll say, you know what, if you come sooner or if we were able to monitor you sooner, we could help you. But now we're sorry. There's nothing that we can do. And who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear, I'm sorry, there's nothing that we can do? Of course, your heart will be flooded with emotions. And of course, you'll be filled with a whole lot of different things that are going on. And sometimes it just happens. No matter how soon you go, or no matter what precautions you've taken, because I know people that have gone to the doctor and they had been going and going and going and somehow, you know, it got missed and they were told, I'm sorry, it's nothing that we can do. But let's give ourselves a chance because no one's perfect, doctors or you and I. Give yourself a chance by doing your regular checkups by asking questions, by paying attention to your symptoms, and knowing your family history. Why do you think it's important to know your family history? Well, I'm glad you asked. The reason it's important to know your family history is because a lot of things are passed down to you genetically. And if you know those things, those things can be taken care of, they can be controlled, they can be monitored and you have a better idea of what to look forward to in the future. But before I really, really get into that, I wanna tell you guys a great story. So this weekend, I had the opportunity to uh, visit one of my aunts. Um, she's having some surgery and she actually was diagnosed with cancer as well, but she's doing fine, everything's going great. But prior to me actually going to visit with her, I was having breakfast. Well, as I was having breakfast, there was a very pretty lady that was sitting across from me. She had on some very distinct jewelry and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. So I got up to leave and I stopped by her table and I said, you know, good morning. I absolutely love that necklace that you have on and those earrings. And I kind of chuckled to myself because I don't wear, you know, jewelry really. And this scar is basically my necklace because I believe that my ears eat my earrings because if I wear two, I always come back with one and it's using my left ear. That is the culprit. I mean, no matter what I do, I come back and one earring is gone. So she's telling me that this lady, you know, made this uh, particular jewelry and I was telling her how pretty it was. And she shared with me that it was one of her sorrows. Imagine that. 
we're actually Sauros because I look down at our hand and I see, you know, the insignia showing our sorority. Okay. Funny thing, she continues to talk and she looked to my neck and she says, so you had uh, thyroid cancer. And I said, I'm going through the process right now. And she says, honey, you'll be fine. I had cervical cancer and I'm doing great. She was like, just stay positive, you know, keep pushing forward, make sure that you're checking yourself out, ask questions. She's saying all the things that I'm saying to you. So then I explained to her, hey, I have this podcast that comes on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. And I would love it, you know, if you would take the time out to actually watch this podcast. And she, without a doubt, took my information and said she would. So this is what I want to happen. I want random conversations to come up where strangers can come together and talk about the different illnesses and things and, con and concerns that they're having. Because talking with her, she was able to give me some insight, you know, into cervical cancer and some things that I should look at, even though I go to my OBGYN, you know, once, once a year, I started saying, huh, was there anyone in my family that had cervical cancer or any other um, reproductive related issues or cancer? So I'm sitting here going, you know what? I really don't know. So that's why I'm dedicating this show to understanding and knowing your family history. Because if you know, anytime you go to the doctor, they give you a thousand pages to fill out because hear me out with doctors, they only know what you tell them and what they test for. So if you don't tell them anything, you don't give them any clues to go and find out what you have going on, then all they can do is just test, test, test and hope for the best. Sure. They're extremely smart and they can look at these tests and say, okay, you have this issue, this issue or that issue, but what about those things that you didn't say anything about or those things you don't know anything about that's in your family history? So when you go in, if you notice that form they give you is, is split down the middle. At the top, it'll say maternal and then paternal. So dealing with your mother's side of the family and your father's side of the family. And then along the left side, now times out of 10, they're asking about different diseases and which person in your family actually had this disease. So for instance, let me give you an idea so you can look into my life. All right. So I have factor five lighting and that is a predisposition to blood clots. How do they find this out? Well, my neurologist had a series of blood tests that were done prior to me having surgery because of this sound that I was hearing in my ears. And it pointed this out. It says that I am positive for factor V lighting. So from this point, hematologist was brought in to see if there were any other genetic disorders that were going on in my blood that I did not know about. And when I say I was so tired of getting stuck I was so tired of taking blood. I was like, do I have any left? Well, I do because I'm still sitting here today and it didn't kill me. So it won't kill you either. If you want to know what's going on, you know, with you and with your body, then I suggest that you go and you see a hematologist to start just to understand the genetics of your blood. So in looking at my family history, my mom's parents died prior to age 55. My father's parents died after age 70. So it's like, okay, my dad's side, they have a little bit of longevity on my mom's side, maybe not so much. But then as I delve into my father's side of the family, there were several family members that we've lost to cancer. But then you go to my mom's side, you have a couple that succumbed to cancer. However, they were well advanced in age. So it's like, okay, you know, what, what is the difference between these people? 
And what is it, you know, in their genetic makeup that caused, say, my aunt to live to be in her 80s on my mom's side with her cancer. But the people on my father's side, when they had cancer, some were in their 20s, 30s, you know, much, much, much younger. But let's let's focus more on the issue concerning the factor five lighting. So when I got the diagnosis, it basically said I only had one copy of it. So that meant one of my parents gave it to me, but I'm not sure which one because neither of them has seen a hematologist to have this test done. So it's just a toss up. I was sitting there trying to figure out, I was like, okay, well, mom's dad, you know, he had aneurysm, stroke. He had all these different things going on. And then my mom's mom, she had a heart attack. And then, but my dad's mom and dad both had heart attacks. So it's like, where did heart attacks come from? They had high blood pressure, diabetes. They had all these different um, things. Now, my father's parents didn't have diabetes. But on my mother's side of the family is diabetes. So it's like knowing all these things when I'm sitting in there in the uh, doctor's office and I have the form out, I can effectively fill out this information and the doctor can take what I fill it out and say, okay, we need to test for this, this, and this because they're better informed about what could potentially be in my genetic makeup. So when you go to the doctor and you're looking at this form, sure it's long, sure, you know, it has all this information and you're wondering why do they need this, why they need that. It's important for them to know these things so they can help you figure out what you have going on when it comes to your health. So what I suggest you do is, is go online, go on Google and Google a medical history form. Take that form, print it out, write down everything that you know, and then talk with your family members. Find out the missing pieces. And then when you have all the information together, if you can get someone to type it up for you, or if you can type it up yourself and save it, every time you go to the doctor, you could print that form and you could give them that. That way you don't miss anything, you don't forget anything, um, if new things come, you just get that same form, put it on there. So as you live, your family medical history is going to change. And then it's very important that you share that information with your children so they know what to look forward to or what to consider when they're not well or what type of doctor they should talk to based off what's been found concerning their family's medical history. So aside from that, you have people that were adopted and or people who don't necessarily know their family history. Say that their parents, grandparents, say everybody is gone and there's no one that they have to talk to to ask about these things. Well, you can have genetic testing done. And from these uh, genetic tests, they can tell you what mutations you have concerning your blood and concerning your basic medical history, in a sense. So I would suggest that you start with a hematologist. Now, I am not in medicine. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. None of that. But I know that if my parents weren't here today and I saw that I had a copy of Factor V Leiden, I would know that it came from one of them. And I could go to, say, a cousin on either side of my family and say, hey, can you guys get tested? And they could get tested. Now, say if one of them has two copies and one of them has one, then you know nine times out of ten which side it came from. Maybe, maybe not. Because if you know how genetic genetics actually works, it won't necessarily come out that way considering, say, their parents both have it or one parent has it. But say if one side of your family doesn't have it at all and the other side of the family has it, ding, 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 you know which person or which parent actually gave this to you.
So you either inherit it from your mom or you inherit it from your dad. All right. Also, if you are so bold and you want to know, and this is speaking to those folks that um, don't know their medical history, the medical family history, and they don't have anyone that they can ask. You can also do uh, DNA testing that helps you to see um, what's in your DNA. And it helps to determine what things you may be predisposed to. So in that instance, if you do that, then you can go to your doctor and you can ask questions and you could talk about different things. And if you start noticing some things that are leaning toward what you found, then bring that up as well because that helps the doctor to take those clues and your um, DNA results or your results from the hematologist where they've done the, uh, the extensive study on the makeup of your blood, then they can put those two things together and say, hey, you have X, Y, Z, and this is what we need to do to treat it going forward. Rather than just taking a stab in the dark, going to the doctor with nothing, and they do a battery of tests, and after all these tests are done, you've paid a whole, whole lot of money and you still don't know exactly what you have going on unless they're able to figure something out by piecing these clues together. So what I need you to do, like I said, is go to Google, find a really good medical history for your family and sit down and go through these uh, items, have those conversations, ask the questions, if you have the ability to ask those uh, folks, your, your parents, grandparents, if they are still living, ask those questions. It's very important. It's going to help you further down the road with your medical history, with your, with your doctor visits, with dealing with illnesses. It's going to help you with all of that. This is a win-win situation for you. This is something that's very important. Because you can't go to the doctor expecting them to fix everything when you know nothing. Yes, yes, doctors are extremely intelligent. I have several friends that are doctors and they are very intelligent. But they cannot, cannot read minds. They cannot create information from nothing. They have to have a starting point. Sure, they can run those tests, but it's important to know what's in your genetic makeup so they can better serve you. So another thing I want you to consider is the impact of what you find. So sure, when I found out I had factor five light, my mind was going a million miles per hour because I'm thinking, oh, goodness, this means, you know, I'm going to die. This is going to cause, you know, me all these issues. But then I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. I've made it 45 years without having any major issues with this factor five lighting. It's just starting to come up. It's just starting to show, you know, signs that it's there. Because in my life, I've only truly had three blood clots. One was from surgery. The next one, like I said, I think it was from dehydration and, you know, playing tennis and jumping on a plane and, you know, doing all the things that you shouldn't do when you uh, play a tennis match. And the third one, it was unprovoked. So that third one is the one, you know, that really worries all the doctors. They're like, you know, why did it form? And why did it form on my brain? You know, what, what caused that? So in knowing all those things, it's like, okay, made it through this far. I haven't had any issues, but now that I know what it is and it's being treated, then I no longer have anything to worry about. I just have to stay on top of my health and any other things that may arise. Now, with the sound that's going past my ear, that whooshing sound, I talked with both of my parents about it, and at one point in their life, they experienced the same thing. And guess what? They were in their 40s as well. Come to find out, they both had issues with their sinuses. Well, I had some arachnoid granulation, and that has something to do with the sinuses. 
and this was also, you know, on my uh, CT scan as well as my MRI and MRV. So I'm not a doctor again. I'm not just going to say, well, maybe that's what it is because both of them said they had the exact same thing. And then after a while, it just stopped. It just went away. And it was funny to me when I was talking to my dad about it because he was like, I don't know how you stand that sound, you know, for that long. Because it just sounds like, whoosh, 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 you know, going past your ears. And it's like, how do you sleep like that? You 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 got to do something to make that stop. Well, went to the neurologist uh, to do the follow-up visit after my surgery. And she basically said, all we can do right now is monitor it because we're not exactly sure, you know, what's causing it. And it may just go away on its own. Imagine that. She said it could possibly be the fact that um, I need to continue to monitor it while the blood thinners are working on it. Because it could just be, you know, a little clot that's being stubborn that, that needs to um, be reduced in size so I don't hear this sound anymore. Who knows? I'm saying all that to say this. It's better the more information you have, the more people you can talk to and ask questions about relating to your health. Um, it's more important for you to go online and look at proven sources, not these fly-by-night uh, sources that are telling you if you hear a sound in your ear, you're going to die. You know, that kind of stuff. You need to look at some proven medical sources, medical journals that give you information or set up a telemed visit. Telemed visits usually last about 30 minutes. And what you do in those visits is you actually talk to the doctor about issues that you're having. So to make the most of a telemed visit, what I think you should do is get you a notepad write down all the questions that you have. And then when you're going through the telemed visit, ask those questions one by one and take notes. Or, hey, with technology, record it. That way, if uh, some things aren't necessarily clear or you don't remember what they said, you can always go back and look at it, listen to it again, and then say, hey, okay, I understand now. I get it. So be prepared when it comes to your health. So if you don't get anything from today's podcast, what I want you to get is to be prepared. One, know your family medical history. Get a form, fill it out, have it readily available where you can either email it to your doctor or you can bring it it's a paper copy to give to your doctor to be placed into your medical file. Or if you want to just sit there during your doctor's visit and transfer that information from the form that you have to the form that they have so that their documentation, you know, is kept uh, uniform for them, then you could do that as well. And then the second thing that I really want you to do or to get from this podcast is that you should create a form, create information that you want to know so you can get the most out of your telemed visit, out of your regular doctor visits. Because what's the point of going to the doctor and they say, you know, hey, how you doing today? And you're like, oh, I'm fine. And you know you're not fine. You know you have some things that are going on. You know last week your big toe was hurting and you don't know why, but it just stopped for no reason. It's those type of things that you need to pay attention to, even if you have to take a notepad and start writing stuff down. Because I know when I was younger, uh, we used to laugh and joke with my mom, like, Mom, what, why do you have this uh, notepad that said, uh, hit my foot on the edge of the table or missed a step going down the stairs? And she said that she had to remember those things because if something hurt later on, she would know what caused it. So let's take that same mentality and say when things hurt us or things bother us, we need to take note of it. So when we do go to the doctor the next time, we can share that. That way they can look at it and start to help us determine what's wrong rather than get home and say, 
dang, you know, I forgot that. Because when's the next time you're going to go to the doctor? And do you think you're going to remember the next time? Who knows? So let's don't leave anything up to chance. Take the time to write this information down. And if you have aging parents, take the time to sit down with them, have this conversation, get this information from them for you, and create one for them as well. Because you can also help them with their medical journey. This all starts with you. Because you are listening, because you care, you can help yourself as well as your family, friends, or anyone you come in contact with that you're concerned about their health. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. Have an absolutely amazing and extraordinary day.